Hey guys, welcome back. Well, today we're going to be doing a request video and it's not been requested by one person, but by many. This is really a hot topic, okay? The question is how to take uh, textures out of Substance Painter and use them in Maya, all right? So that's what we're going to do. Here we go. Right guys, well, we're in Maya 2018, as you can see, and I have two uh, models here. I have a low poly cube and a high poly cube. Now, um, that one is pretty high poly. It's a couple of million uh, polygons, I think. And uh, that's what you need to uh, go through this process. So it doesn't really matter what you have as long as you have a low and a high poly. And as long as you make sure that your low poly is UV'd, okay? So if we check this guy out and we, uh, we can see that it has a proper UV, okay? Now, first of all, let's uh, get some uh, misunderstanding out of the way. Um, people say, okay, how do I use Substance Painter uh, textures in Maya? It's not about Maya, it's about the renderer that you're going to use, whether that is in Maya or not, okay? So when you are preparing textures and you want to bring them back in Maya, you need to consider, okay, but once I'm back in Maya, am I going to use Arnold, am I going to use Mental Ray, uh, RenderMan, something else? So that is what the process is all about, okay? So now that we have these two uh, models, let's uh, jump into Substance Painter. Here we go. Okay guys, here we are. We're gonna go to uh, File, we're gonna go to New, and I'm gonna leave this at PBR Metal Rough. I'm gonna select my low poly mesh right there, open that up. Leave this at Direct X. I'm gonna set this to 2K, that's fine. And I'm gonna simply hit OK, which will bring in my cube. And uh, I'll show you that that's the case by simply zooming out a bit, and there you go, all right, OK. So with that done, you can see that there's exactly one texture set because there's nothing added here. It's only one thing, okay? So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go in and we're gonna bake our initial textures. So we're gonna go in and uh, let's see, I'll set this to 2K as well. We're gonna go into this little folder here so we can select our high poly, which is uh, this guy. And that might take a while. Uh, like I said, it's a couple of million uh, poly count. We're gonna open that up. I'm gonna leave all of this alone. I'm just gonna turn off ID here, okay? So let's uh, hit a bake and uh, wait while that completes. Here we go. Right guys, you can see that everything has been applied. Uh, our cube uh, looks very different right now. And what we need to do next is we need to apply a material to it, obviously, okay? Now, for demonstration purposes, to explain the process, I need something that is both uh, rough and reflective. Normally you wouldn't do that. You would kind of go with what's appropriate for the model, but we'll see what we got, okay? So I'm gonna go to Smart Materials, and uh, let's see, we have for example, this machinery um, material right here, it has some reflection on it, so we'll bring it in. We'll give it a sec. Have a look at it and see if we can tweak that maybe. So we'll go in and uh, let's see, we're gonna go to our metal base and we've got a roughness meter right here that we can play with that should have an effect. And we have our metalness, if you will. You can see it's starting to look a little bit like gold. Uh, let's see, we don't wanna go nuts on that. We just want a little bit of reflection, okay? There you go. I think that's fine. Okay, so let's say our texturing is done. Now what? Well, we're gonna export these textures, obviously, because we want to use them in Maya and specifically in Arnold, okay? So I'm gonna go to File, I'm gonna go to Export Textures. Now that will give me this window right here. Now, first of all, I got a configuration tab and I got an export tab. Now under export tab, I can go in here and we got this uh, configuration, PBR Metal Rough, and I can go in here and say, okay, I wanna use Arnold instead. Just click Arnold, right? And once you click on Arnold and you export, you will get all the maps that are needed to um, populate the Arnold material in Maya, right? Because if we go to the configuration tab, we click on Arnold, it says that, okay, if we export this, it will create a diffuse map, a specular map, roughness map, an FO map, or F0, that's for um, Fresnel, a normal map, height map, and a emissive map. 
Now, this is kind of the default for an Arnold material. But keep in mind, if you are, for example, exporting, let's say, something that's taken as a piece of wood, uh, why would you have a specularity map unless it is, you know, shiny wood, right? So this is kind of the default. It doesn't mean that you need to use all of them, right? So we're going to go with this. But if you, for example, are working with a Redshift as a renderer or uh, preparing for your Unity game, uh, game engine or V-Ray, it's a different set, okay? So once you decide where you're gonna go with this, it will come up with the appropriate maps. Now, even with that, now I have, for example, Arnold selected. It will create a diffuse map, but sometimes the base color map looks better on the model than a diffuse map. So what if I want to add one here and remove one, right? So I can basically click on this little X here, remove my diffuse, right? go up here and click on RGB because I want to add a new channel. All right. Now I need to change the name of that thing. So I'm just going to copy this right here. Control C and go in and hit Control V. Now that dollar sign mesh, uh, that makes sure that the name of your model is in front of it. And then we'll change emissive and we'll call that base. And something's going on down there. I think, uh, I don't know, it's freaking out, but we'll see in a minute. Okay, and then what we need to do is we need to find the base color, and that's right here. We're gonna left click on it, we're gonna drag it, and we're gonna drop it on top of that RGB button, okay? And then we're gonna go down, and we're gonna select the RGB channels. So now that that has been added, and I'll just go up here because this is starting to annoy me. I'm gonna, no, I'll do it in a sec. Uh, yeah, so we got a new set, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna export these and then we're gonna populate them in an Arnold material in Maya, okay? So how do we export that? We're gonna go back to the export tab. We have Arnold, okay? And uh, let's see, um, we're gonna leave that alone. We're gonna go up here. We're gonna uh, identify where we wanna save it. So let's go into the folder that we created, which is fine. Select that, uh, let's see, uh, PNG format, 8-bit, that's okay. Yeah, everything else we're gonna leave alone, okay? So let's uh, hit export. Okay, good, good. And now we're gonna jump back into Maya. All right, so here we are. Uh, we don't need our high poly model anymore because we now have a normal map instead. We can get rid of that. We have our low poly or somewhat low poly. I'm just gonna go to the top here and I'm just gonna hit W to move it. Hold down X to put it in the center and just make sure that, you know, history is gone and uh, free transformation and so forth and we're all good, okay? Now, first of all, for the environment, if you want this thing to look uh, similar to what it looks like in Substance Painter, you kinda need to uh, mimic the surroundings as well, all right? So how do we do that? Well, if you go into uh, Arnold, you can go in and uh, go under lights and create a sky dome light. Now, why are we doing that? And I'll just show you, here it is, the big huge sphere around our object. That is where we're gonna plug in our HDRI image. And that is what is used in um, Substance Painter as well. And to get similar results, what I wanna do is use the exact same one, right? So I'm just gonna dig into my computer. I'm gonna find the location where um, these are stored and I'm gonna use one of those, okay? Hang on. All right guys, well here it is. So uh, I went to my C drive under program files where you have a folder called uh, Logarithmic that should have a subfolder called Substance Painter 2, Resources, Shelf, Logarithmic Environments. And then in there you have exterior, interior, and studio. So uh, we're gonna go with exterior. I'm gonna go in here and uh, we'll, um, it doesn't really matter which one. Uh, let's see, we'll do the panorama one, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy that and I'm just gonna put it on my desktop so I can grab it when I need it in a sec, okay? All right, so I'm gonna open up my outliner and uh, let's see what we got. We got our sky dome light right here. I'm gonna hit uh, control A to open up that and uh, you can see that we are in there. Right now it's using a color as a background. We're gonna hit that swatch. We're gonna select file. We're gonna go to the folder. We're gonna go to the desktop. Desktop, there we go. 
and that thing is called what I think it's panorama there we go and we're gonna open that up all right now what else uh, let's see filter we don't want one so we're gonna turn that off and what's happening right now is that every pixel of this sphere is projecting light on this thing now keep in mind we're looking in our preview mode here so that's gonna look different than your actual render but for now this is fine okay all right, now, like I said, um, we created uh, Arnold textures, so we need to apply an Arnold material. So we're gonna select this guy, we're gonna right click, go to assign new material, we're gonna go to Arnold shader, and we're gonna select an Arnold standard surface material, okay? All right, so what's what? Well, we have a color. Now, um, the color of our material, for that we created a base a color instead of a diffuse, right? So we're gonna hit this uh, swatch here, we're gonna go to file, we're gonna go to folder. We're gonna look for the folder that we created. Um, what is that thing called? There you go. And here you have your uh, base, okay? So we're gonna take the base color, there you go. We're gonna open. And we're gonna turn on this little guy right here so we can see our material on our cube. And there you have it, okay? So that has been applied. Now that is our uh, base. Let's see what else we got. So uh, let's see, we're gonna go into our material again and we are going to, uh, and I need to rename this. I think that will be easier. Uh, I'll just call it cube color. Okay, so next uh, we are gonna go at uh, metalness, right? Now that's what I'm gonna put in the, uh, oh, the specularity goes in here actually. Uh, we don't have a metalless map, not that I think. So we're gonna go into our color here. We're gonna click on this guy. Again, file, folder, and specular. And there we go. Good, good. So we're gonna click on it again. So that's in specular. We got weight set to one. Uh, on our main color, we actually wanna set weight to one as well, which is uh, good, good. And uh, let's see what else we got. So we have an index of refraction of 1.52. Uh, let's see, uh, we're just gonna go through these. Okay, we're gonna go and find uh, the bump or the, uh, the normal map. Okay, so here, bump mapping under geometry. Uh, we're gonna go in, we're gonna select that, go to file, and we're gonna go in, and we're not gonna use it as a bump, we're gonna use it as a tangent space normal, okay? And then we're gonna go up to File, Folder, and we're gonna search for our normal map, all right? That will give us our detail. It's gonna look black initially, because like I said, we're not rendering, okay? So that's that, and uh, let's see. Um, I just wanna make sure that everything that we need, we have actually used. I think we have the most of it. We got the color, the specularity, we got the, um, the normal map. Um, let's see, the Fresnel is not really that important right now. I'm just checking my little list here. I think we're good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and render this out uh, using Arnold. And I'm just gonna use my default. Okay guys, well there you have it. Uh, I will do a render in Substance Painter as well, so you can compare the two and I'll put them in a the thumbnail. Uh, but that said, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. If you don't wanna miss out on future videos, please make sure to subscribe, okay? Well, that said, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time, bye. Well, thanks for watching, and before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.